So my name is Roy Ascot. Um, I'm an artist. I cling to that label because it gives me the maximum intellectual and creative freedom to move through the world. I write a great deal, I reflect a great deal about the place of particularly new technologies in consciousness. I run a center at a University of Wales for research into the interactive arts, which takes the form of a virtual community of artists. Uh, Victoria Vesna, artists well known, I think, here, um, who wish to reflect on their practice theoretically uh, and who are pursuing the PhD. Um, and that's a sort of virtual community that I'm, I'm, I'm running in, is, is another part of my life. I would like to start out with an overview over the history of media and media art in the 20th century. Um, you've been active, I understand, uh, actively involved from the 60s, from the cybernetic uh, roots of uh, what is nowadays called cyberspace. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would like you to sketch a very global picture of what happened during the century. In terms of my own development and my own thinking. Please also situate your own work within yeah. a, a more general sure. flow that you perceive yeah. there. Okay. Well, flow is a good word to start with because in the 60s when I was involved, um, there was very much a concern with fluxus, with performance, with um, the flow within narrative from place to place, person to person, idea to idea. Um, and in my own work, I had just come from uh, a thesis when I was a student on in the theoretical side concerning Cezanne, where I was interested in the viewpoint of Cezanne, which was a mobile viewpoint, and in the uh, subject of Cezanne, which was flux, in my view, flux late 19th century French painting, apart from uh, what was happening with um, photography um, and Moybridge and studies of this kind as they impacted on, on uh, European photography, was Cezanne who was rethinking the whole relationship between the viewer and the field, which was, was a transactional one. And as is well known, the composition of Cezanne was never resolved, it was always in flux, and it was for the viewer to resolve it. Now that the reason that I took that um, idea and developed it with regard to Cezanne was because in my own work, I was working with uh, panels, transparent panels, which had very simplistic images painted on them, which were constructed in a way so that they could slide between one another on a wall in such a way that the viewer could interact with the work to create the work itself by moving these panels around. So. In the early 60s, that was where my own work was going, set within the context of an interest in um, participation in art rather than interactivity in that sense, um, on the one hand. On the other hand, um, I came across um, in, uh, I think, 1960, a book by a man called F.H. George, who had taken the ideas of the early ideas of neural networks um, Rosenblatt's The Perceptron, in fact, the neural network, um, and had developed an idea of, of, of modeling the brain from, the, from these neural networks. And that book alluded to this science, which hitherto had been unknown to me, of cybernetics. And I saw immediately, I had one of those sort of flashes that one gets occasionally, rarely in one's lifetime, that here and actually was a, and a kind of a fundamental theoretical base for the development of an art. Just as in classical art, which was just concerned with the surface of things, you had this idea of um, um, uh, the, the um, anatomy of the body being the substructure that upon which the surface could be modeled and understood. So in cybernetics, I saw that you had the substructure of relationships, of dynamic relationships. Uh, and so I plunged <laughs> headfirst into this whole field of cybernetics and developed a, a theory, um, if you like, of 
of uh, participation, of interaction, where the artwork was no longer an art object, but the artwork of a system, which always involved the viewer. That, in other words, the meaning that an artwork would have would be dependent upon the participation of the viewer in the evolution of that meaning. But that was worked out for, by me in the 60s with uh, you know, transparent uh, perspex sheets and uh, panels and hinged wooden panels and things like this because um, uh, although the idea of the computer and the way that one could use the computer in that sense was very clear to me, access to such a computer was absolutely impossible. And um, uh, in, in my own work at this time, I, I moved from Europe to the United States, first to Canada. Um, and during the 70s, I was very, very much involved in developing uh, those ideas across tabletops with players interacting across tabletop. It's still not using it. It wasn't until 19... Uh, 80 that I had access to a Texas Instrument portable terminal and um, I think this is relevant to what what we're talking about it was while I was in San Francisco I used to run the San Francisco Art Institute uh, at that time I met up with some people uh, I mean in particular Jacques Vallée um, who let's say hovered between two realms Vallée uh, started one of the first um, uh, situations that became the internet. He started the planet software with Infomedia, and Infomedia was a worldwide network. It's a little bit like the EYES network, which was the equivalent um, first networking experiment on the East Coast. His was in the West Coast, the United States. And basically, it had a very well-developed network right across the world that with a local call you could log into, just as we can with the internet now, and you could then download programs and so on from these Texas Instrument terminals, the ones with little acoustic couplers, rubber caps, you put the telephone on and, and the printout was paper and so on. Uh, so on the one hand, there was that community. And the way I got into it, I think, is important to me. And that was through something that you would call psychic uh, matters. I was very much involved in that time, I still am in certain ways, with ideas about the tarot, about I Ching, and, things like this. And a program was, a, a radio, um, film program, television program was being made um, in Hollywood about certain manifestations of this using technology, levitation and so on. And so they roped me in to become involved in this program. And it was through that that I met the people putting together Close Encounters of the Third Kind, which you remember was based on Jacques Vallée. Jacques Vallée was the model for the, the main character in, in that film. And through that route, um, and uh, I met up in uh, uh, 1980. Um, well, first of all, I, I got some money from the National Endowment of the Arts to do the first project where I sent out uh, terminals in the mail to um, uh, a number of artists, Douglas Hubler, uh, for example, a conceptual artist out on the West Coast. Uh, Douglas Davis, um, whose work I think is pretty well known through art and technology writing in New York. Um, uh, Keith Arnett, um, a British artist in, in New York, and so on, uh, with instructions about how to get online. They got online, and we did, we did a project over three weeks through these terminals. 